Hello everyone, Juxtaposition here. Today's video is going to be a discussion regarding Benedict Canyon and uh, its history and um, we'll, we'll breeze through Walt Disney living in Holmby Hills and Art Linklater living in Bel Air which are really um, part of Benedict Canyon. They're either on one of the uh, ridge lines or they're at the base of Benedict Canyon in the case of uh, Walt Disney and his Carrollwood Drive address and uh, Hugh Hefner and the Playboy Mansion that's also at the base in close proximity to the Walt Disney property um, however it is uh, separated by Sunset Boulevard but uh, once you get north of Sunset Boulevard you've got Walt Disney and then you know you've got Dennis Wilson you've got where Elvis Presley used to live you've got to work your way up Bel Air Road and you'll pass the Beverly Hillbillies Mansion and then you'll come to the Art Linklater home and um, that is on the west ridge line of Benedict Canyon and then um, then it drops down and you have Beverly Glen Boulevard and the next street over is called Angelo Drive which is very important and if you were wanting to do a comprehensive analysis of the Sharon Tate Abigail Folger murder you would just focus on Angelo Drive okay because Cielo Drive is completely irrelevant to the murders I don't think any of the murders used Cielo Drive I think they use Angelo Drive and Sunbrook Drive and um, and then they use Benedict Canyon Drive for a very short interval just to pop down to Sunset Boulevard which is in close proximity to where Angelo Drive empties into Benedict Canyon. So again, it would behoove everyone to personally visit these areas. And of course, you realize there's no sidewalk. So you're not going to be able to park your car because there's no parking. You'd have to go into a driveway and then probably the person's going to have a surveillance camera or a ring camera and then you're going to get asked to move your car. And uh, they have roaming security. Uh, I personally don't recall ever seeing any roaming security when I've been in there, but I do believe they probably have a rent a cop service. But in any case, what I'm saying is if you had a motorcycle, a scooter, or a bicycle, um, that would be perfect. Perfect. But that said, it's on a fairly steep hillside that leads from Sunset Boulevard up to Mulholland Drive, which I'm sure everyone's heard of Mulholland Drive. Well, Benedict Canyon runs north-south, not in a straight line, it because it curves and twists its way from Mulholland Drive down to Sunset Boulevard. And uh, there's a series of canyons. There's a series of canyons that, that go from the Hollywood Bowl and where the Hollywood sign is, you know, which is technically in Griffith Park. That's to the east, and that's above Highway 101, which um, they call the Hollywood Freeway. In that sector, it's called the Hollywood Freeway. And above the Hollywood Freeway on the east side is both an observatory uh, and a Hollywood sign, which it's illegal for you to climb all over that sign. However, people do do that. And um, again, that is on a very ferociously steep hillside. And then if you go down the hillside, you're at Highway 101. If you cross over, you're at the Hollywood Bowl Amphitheater built into the hillside. And then you'll have, um, behind that, you have what's called Nichols Canyon. And that is a serpentine road that leads up from um, Hollywood Boulevard. You pick up Nichols Canyon, and then that is very, very curvy and twisty in it is below the Natalie Wood, Cass Elliott, CIA house at 7708 Woodrow Wilson Drive. But there's a lot of trees and bushes, and so it's unclear, you know, what you could see. I don't think you'd ever be able to find the Natalie Wood home from Nicholas Canyon. I don't think it's possible. But I'm just telling you, it's in close proximity to it. You could almost throw a football, you know, from where Natalie Wood used to swim. Well, she didn't swim. She uh, fooled around in the pool, put her uh, feet in, but she didn't swim. She lived at a home. She lived in a home that had a swimming pool, but she didn't swim. All right. And uh, the next canyon you've heard of is called Laurel Canyon, and that was home to the 
film stars, the silent film stars, Harry Houdini also, and then later all of the um, social engineering musical stars were given homes in there, including, you know, um, Stephen Stills and Joni Mitchell and Cass Elliot and John Phillips and Michelle Phillips. And Neil Young lived there for a while. John Lennon and his secretary lived, uh, stayed at a home there and uh, in Laurel Canyon. Jim Morrison of The Doors lived there. Some of the monkeys lived in there. Uh, you know, the monkeys, a uh, composite television made for TV band, which pretty much all of the stars of Laurel Canyon were helped. They were all helped quite a bit, not just the monkeys. Whether you could play your instruments or not, you still got a lot of help. The Beach Boys got a lot of help. They had whole orchestras behind them. Phil Spector and the, the Wrecking Crew is a whole group of professional musicians who are much older than the artists themselves, much more experienced with composing music, putting melodies together, putting the building blocks together, and the foundations of what makes a good tune. All right, so then beyond uh, Laurel Canyon, which later became Disney Studios, United States Air Force Underground Complex, keyword there is Underground Complex at 8935 Wonderland Avenue, which is off Lookout Mountain Drive. There's two ways to get to it. Lookout Mountain Drive, which would be you go up Laurel Canyon to the tippy top, and Frank Zappa lived right on the northwest corner and Harry Houdini lived at the southeast corner of that intersection of Laurel Canyon Boulevard and Lookout Mountain Drive. You turn left, which is west, and you proceed about a mile, and you'll come up to an elementary school, and at that school, you jog to the left, and that's Wonderland Avenue, and you go down there about a mile, about a mile, and you'll come to 8935. It's very obscure, and uh, there's an underground parking facility there, and there's 100,000 square feet, five studios for Disney Brothers Studios, right? Underneath that ground. So there's a lot of excavation that went on there in 1937, 38, 39, leading up to Pearl Harbor. But that construction project of having a war propaganda movie center that was obviously top secret was commenced before the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. In the same way that the John Wayne Flying Tiger film that memorialized Americans, 100 American pilots flying for the Republic of China in British P-40 um, fighter bombers out of Burma, you know, where the opium has grown, Burma. I think it's called Malamar today. You know, they're on their fifth coup. And it's a CIA-controlled colony. It was an OSS colony before. That's where Evel Younger, the district attorney of Los Angeles, at age 24, was sent to Burma. And before he was sent to Burma, Charles Older, the judge for the Manson trial, he was a young man flying P-40s under the United Republic of China flag. How ironic is that, that Charlie Manson is convicted and it's presided over by a Flying Tiger's ace, he was the third most prolific uh, shooter of Japanese bombers, prior to Pearl Harbor. In other words, the judge in the Manson case, there were numerous judges, I'm just going to say the last judge, the hanging judge that they brought in around June 1970 to make sure that Charlie Manson didn't get to represent himself violate his Sixth Amendment rights, make sure he offered no defense, called no witnesses, did not provide an alibi, wasn't given an opportunity, don't cross-examine any of the prosecution witnesses, don't call any of your own witnesses. That judge was working for a CIA OSS contractor, okay, in 1939, 1940, 1941, before Pearl Harbor, Charles Older is working out of Burma and Bangkok, Thailand, to shoot down Japanese planes before World War II starts, right? But it's not under the American flag, it's under the Republic of China flag. You know, those communists that we don't like? Anyway, so that's the Manson judge, Charles Older. Check it out. 
And then the district attorney of Los Angeles, who prosecuted the Manson family, so-called, because they didn't exist in real life, only in magazines, books, and television did the Manson family exist. There was no Manson family. However, that said, the district attorney was Evel Younger, and he worked for the FBI at age 24, and he was reassigned, reassigned to the United States Army and sent to Burma to make sure, I guess, all the opium was protected during the war with Japan. Because that's where he spent World War II, was where Judge, Judge Older just left. And then in comes the district attorney, Evel Younger. He's not district attorney yet. He's only 24, 25, 26 years old. But he's learning about the drug business for the OSS, which quickly becomes the CIA. That's the district attorney who prosecuted prosecuted Saran Saran, who didn't murder Robert Kennedy. And then he prosecuted Charlie Manson, who didn't murder Sharon Tate or anybody whatsoever. And prosecuted the other girls, the girls and uh, Charlie Watson, the other Charlie. See, the other guy with Charlie's. You got Charlie Manson, Charlie Watson, Charlie Old, Charles Older. <laughs> I think there's more Charlies than that, but there's three. One's the judge and two are defendants that are found guilty because they're not allowed to defend themselves. And the fix was in. Anyway, what I'm telling you is that uh, this is the people who are running Los Angeles. So you can see that the Superior Court of the State of California is completely infiltrated by OSS CIA judges. And you can see that the district attorney, Evel Younger, he's an alumni. He's an alumni of the United States Army Intelligence and drug dealing in Burma for the OSS, and then he's bestowed a Brigadier Air Force general status, having never served in the United States Air Force, they designate him an Air Force Brigadier General, which is a low-ranking general, but nevertheless, having spent no time in the Air Force, I guess that qualified Evel Younger to be able to go into the Disney Brothers studio at 8935 Wonderland Avenue, five studios, 100,000 square feet underground facility right? Keyword, underground facility, which requires excavation of dirt. And it's up a steep mountain, so it's very precarious, and that's going to take, that's going to take a couple of years of dump trucks. It's going to take 10,000 to 15,000 heavy-duty dump trucks, trips, and it's going to take 15 to 20 minutes to drive from the excavation site down to Sunset Boulevard, where presumably they're going to get on the freeway and go somewhere to dump all that dirt, right? All right, well, anyway, that's the history of Laurel Canyon. The next canyon over is uh, referred to as Coldwater Canyon, and then the Truesdale Estates, named after a, a real estate developer by the name of Truesdale, and Elvis Presley had a nice home in there, 1174 Hillcrest Road in the Truesdale Estates. There's also what's called the Bird Neighborhood, because there's a series of neighborhood streets that are named after the sparrow and the canary and, you know, bluebird. And so it's a combination of the Truesdale Estates and the birds. Then uh, you have Will Rogers, Beverly Hills Park. Will Rogers, the famous political satirist. And then above the park, you have Franklin Canyon Reservoir and Park. So you can go up there and hike and run and at a reservoir that collects the rainwater. Then the next canyon over is Benedict Canyon. They don't have a reservoir, but um, it was known as the Ranch of Waters. I'll come back to Benedict Canyon in a second. The next, uh, the next uh, area over is uh, called Bel Air Road, which is where our link letter lived, and at the top of his hill is Stone Canyon Reservoir, which is like Franklin Reservoir, where it collects the rainwater below, below Mulholland Drive, but still pretty high up in the sun. These are the Santa Monica mountain range, and it is a fairly steep, you know, six to six to ten percent average grade, depending on which how they cut the terraces, because all the homes that were built in all these canyons, Nichols Canyon, Laurel Canyon. Coldwater Canyon, Benedict Canyon, right? And then on Bel Air Road, which is not a canyon, but it's a ridgeline, or Summit Ridge Drive, which is uh, be, is right next to Franklin Reservoir, 
uh, all six of those streets require excavation of dirt. In other words, bulldozers cutting and slicing into a hillside to you know put a divot into the hillside. Then that dirt, it just can't be shoved aside because it'll fall into whoever's going to be living below, have all that loose dirt. So it really has to be hauled away from Beverly Hills, taken out. And that is the conundrum. And that has been going on for over 100 years of excavation and building what's called terraces. You know, there's a different words for it, benches, you know, building benches in the hillsides. And that way, you know, you can have a more substantial lot and your home doesn't have to be built on stilts because the alternative to excavation is less expensive, but it's not as desirable. That is where you suspend your house out and over the hillside perched on wooden stilts with concrete reinforced foundation. And um, it also means your house is affected more by wind and starts creaking and making noises as it ages. So most people would prefer to have their home on terra firma, solid dirt. And that's what most people did in Beverly Hills is that they, um, and Hollywood, West Hollywood is where Laurel Canyon and Nicholas Canyon is. They prefer to have excavated lots. All right. So that said, if you've been watching my videos and especially my Manson Mandacity videos, you know, the media has done a terrific job of misleading you your entire life on every subject, but especially things to do with Sharon Tate. So number one, Sharon Tate uh, never lived at the Cielo Drive murder property. She never lived there and her clothes were not hanging in the closet. Another point is that Abigail Folger, who was a private banker for the CIA, a, a very new, new to the job private banker, she had 18 months of experience. Sharon Tate had, you know, you could say that she had her whole life to pr prepare for Hollywood because she was a beauty queen from age six months in Dallas, Texas from 1940, uh, 1944, I think she started when she was born, 1943, 44. And she was dragged to beauty pageants by her CIA mother, Doris Tate, OSS at that time. And her father was uh, Paul Tate, a colonel in the army in army intelligence and uh, was a CIA operator. And that is how Sharon Tate was born into the business. And she was selected to be an actress, which is code for social engineer. That's what you do. You create a celebrity. Sharon couldn't dance. She couldn't sing. She didn't speak French. She didn't speak foreign languages. She really didn't have a lot of uh, skills in terms of talent. All right. But she was the daughter of a colonel in the army who's in Operation Gladio, which if you don't know what that means, you know, Gladio means by the sword in Italian. So that means they use this on civilians, you know, like at My Lai, 504 innocent women and children, not enemy combatants. The bayonet is used on civilians, right? So don't be surprised if you hear that Sharon Tate got bayoneted 16 times by an M7 Army bayonet NATO issue, because guess what? This, this weapon was designed to kill civilians, primarily, right? All right, so what I wanted to tell you is that uh, when I drilled into Cello Drive, I, you know, it, it, that, that story uh, comes about halfway through the history of Benedict Canyon. So let me just read you a little uh, excerpt about Benedict Canyon, like where did it come from, what, what years did they develop it? Okay, uh, technically, Benedict Canyon is a ravine that drops in a north-south direction. Its highest point or crest line along the Santa Monica Mo Mountains is really uh, memorialized by Mulholland Drive. And again, the other canyons neighboring it are Franklin Canyon, which is home to the Franklin Reservoir, and Coldwater Canyon. And then to the east of Coldwater Canyon, you have Laurel Canyon. So A cross-section of the land of Benedict Canyon will reveal granite and volcanic origins, which is layered with worn river rocks and ocean bottom mud, if you go back far enough in history. The upper Benedict Canyon 
are the subdivisions for the Benedict Hills, which consists, believe it or not, of only 107 homes. So the the home where, well, the house, because it's not a home, the house where Sharon Tate was killed was a Hollywood set for porn films and parties and scandalous events. And it is one of 107 homes in the Benedict Canyon terraced area, which includes the Benedict Hills Estates, which is up at the top, and that consists of 229 homes that are smaller lots. And that is part of Mulholland Drive. There's a couple of uh, gated residential smaller homes at the tippy top. But within the canyon proper, everything's fairly private. Again, no sidewalks. Pretty much everybody's got a gate, and everything is very um, private, except that many of the homes, like the Cielo Drive Murder House, very surveillable from Bel Air Road and Summit Ridge Drive. You can see onto that property from literally dozens of other people's homes or pullouts using telescopes and infrared binoculars. And I'm pretty sure there are listening devices all over all of these surveillance properties. Benedict Canyon was part of what was called Rancho de las Aquas, the Ranch of the Waters, which also included present-day Beverly Hills. It was named after Edison A. Benedict, who was a storekeeper, and he was a native, actually, of Boonville, Missouri. He took a homestead in Benedict Canyon in 1868. With the help of his wife and sons, he built an apiary, which is a bee colony, and he raised honey. And he's reported to have made a single shipment of 45,000 pounds of honey from the Santa Monica Pier to ship out to his customers. 45,000 pounds of honey developed in Benedict Canyon by Edison Benedict. One of Mr. Benedict's sons, Pierce E. Benedict, later went on to be elected to the city of Beverly Hills Board of Trustees at the time of its incorporation. Anything that you read in Wikipedia regarding Sharon Tate or Roman Polanski and the Sailor Dar property is completely false. So just ignore it and certainly don't repeat it. Don't repeat it because it's not even remotely correct. Okay, so I just told you there's only about 107 homes in Benedict Canyon proper. And um, Benedict Canyon is a mix of vegetation and growth that is endemic to Southern California, which includes oak trees and grasses on the lower slopes to chaparral and lupine in the higher hillside. You can also, along Franklin Creek, find sycamores and ferns and vines, evergreens and pines. Now, the Cielo Drive property actually had pine trees installed and grown, which were not natural at all. And I believe they've all been torn out because the property was demoed and rebuilt and uh, has a provisional owner by the name of Jeffrey Franklin, who was the producer of Full House, who was the, uh, which included Bob Saget, who recently got bludgeoned to the back of his head and died in a Four Seasons Hotel in Orlando earlier in 2022. I think it was uh, January 9th. He went to heaven, I think. All right, so... What I wanted to tell you is that Benedict Canyon really began being developed in 1868. And so you've got over 150 years of uh, people excavating and building lots. Now, when I say people, I guess what I mean is Archeo Studios, the clandestine services, because most of the homes in there, you know, of the 107 homes, I'm going to say probably half of them are owned by the CIA owned and controlled because I'm going to give you a list of the names of some of the actors and actresses that have lived in Benedict Canyon over the years. You've heard of them. Anne Margaret, she lived above the Sharon Tate murder scene. Lauren McCall, Susan Berman, Paul Byrne. You may not recognize the name, but he married Jean Harlow. He was a much older man. I think he was like 57 years old and she was 21 years old when they got married. And I believe he uh, mysteriously got murdered in the house, 9820 uh, Easton Drive. Check it out, 9820 Easton Drive. It's attributed to belonging to Jay Sebring, who that's not his real name. That's a CIA name, Tom Coomer. 
And, you know, Tom Coomer didn't own that home. He's a barber. A barber cannot afford to buy a five, six million dollar home. So with a swimming pool and a butler. So the point is, Paul Byrne probably didn't own it either. And neither did Gene Harlow, who also mysteriously died at age 26, kind of like Sharon Tate, only not by bayonet, by having her kidneys fail. Yeah, but her husband also went bye-bye. So then we had Leon Schlesinger, Jacqueline Bissett, you may remember from her movie in The Deep, and Humphrey Bogard. You've heard of Humphrey Bogard, right, from Casablanca. He lived in there. Laura Flynn Boyle. Charlie Chaplin lived in Benedict Canyon. Oh, yeah. Shelley Duvall. Remember her from uh, some Jack, Jack Nicholson films, uh, The Shining? Barbara Eden, my favorite genie. Mike Farrell from uh, MASH, he lived in there. Heidi Fleiss, the Hollywood uh, mistress for prostitutes, she lived there. Jennifer Grey, Jean Harlow, Jimmy, Jimi Hendrix lived in Benedict Canyon. Uh, Kim Kardashian, you might have heard of her. Doris Day's son, Terry Melcher, was a caretaker on the property where Sharon Tate was murdered. I wouldn't necessarily say he lived there, but uh, Wikipedia says he did. And I'm saying, no, nah, nobody lived at Sailor Drive. So I say poppycock on him. They've got some names on here. They say Sharon Tate lived there. Nope, that's incorrect. She never lived there. No, no, no. No, she didn't. Elizabeth Montgomery lived in Benedict Canyon, you know, bewitched. Um, Rupert Murdoch lived in Benedict Canyon. Eddie Murphy lived in there. Hugh O'Brien lived in there. Tom Coomer, Jay Sebring lived in there. Gene Simmons of Kiss lived in Benedict Canyon. Paul Stanley lived in there. Mark Wahlberg. John Voight, remember him? Isn't he Angelina Jolie's um, father? Tom Sizemore, he lived in Benedict Canyon. Okay, well, you got the picture. Is That's kind of the who's who of television and film. It's, a, it's not everybody, but it's a good sampling of people uh, who lived in there and certainly some luminary names like Rupert Murdoch, right? So what I'm going to tell you is every single name I just mentioned is under 24-7 surveillance from CIA. And they lived in Benedict Canyon, which means they had to live in properties that were 24-7 surveilled. And I don't know how many names I just threw out there, but it's 40, 50 names. And I told you there's only 107 houses. And I'm telling you the Cielo Drive property is 100% surveillance house, as are the six homes in close proximity to it. And now, today, in this video, I'm going to add a seventh home above the crime scene, immediately above the steep hillside above, which is 10101 Angelo View Drive. 10101 Angelo View Drive. Um, it's under construction right now. They're building a, a giga mansion there. Not a mega mansion, a giga. And below the crime scene is where Walt Disney had his 35,000 square foot home at 355 North Carrollwood Drive, which is walking distance to the, Sher uh, the Sharon Tate murder scene. It's also walking distance to the Hugh Hefner Playboy Mansion, which is on cross. You have to cross over Sunset Boulevard to get to the Playboy Mansion. You don't need to have that problem to get up to the Cielo Drive, which is on Bella. Yeah, it's on Bella Drive. Or you could say it's on Sunbrook Drive, because you know what, it's a lot closer to Sunbrook Drive than it is to Cielo Drive. So if you use the words Angelo Drive, or Angelo View Drive, or Sunbrook Drive, you're in close proximity to where Sharon Tate and Abigail Folger were bayoneted to death 28 times for Abigail and 16 times for Sharon and then a total of 103 bayonet strikes for f five people mostly four people so what I wanted to tell you is that uh, Benedict Canyon is a surveillance canyon the whole canyon not just where Sharon Tate was killed but the whole friggin canyon and that is certainly true with Laurel Canyon that is true with Laurel Canyon as well not really sure about Coldwater Canyon and Franklin Canyon doesn't have a lot of homes in it, so that's probably minimal surveillance for people that like to go jogging. Um, all right, so where am I today? So I already pointed out that all the homes in at least 
200 degree fashion around the murder scene for Sharon Tate, which at that time the address was 10050 Cielo Drive. But there's 10048 Cielo Drive, and it's a duplication Doppler Ganger twin home immediately below. It's 150 feet to the terrace below. It was purchased and excavated and developed also in 1941, 1942, 1943, and then it was finished in 1944 where they completed the landscaping. Then they did an elaborate photo shoot with Michelle Morgan, who at that time was 24 years old. She was 21 when they pretended that she was the fake owner. And those two properties, 10048 Cielo and 10050 Cielo, were closed around Thanksgiving 1941, 10 days before Pearl Harbor. The reason that's important is that the Cielo Drive surveillance properties were being excavated and constructed at the exact same time that the Disney Studios underground facility at 8935 Wonderland Avenue in Laurel Canyon, that's being built and constructed simultaneously with RKO Studios and little Michelle Morgan, a French actress, age 21, who's the provisional fake owner. And the reason that we know she's a fake owner is after four years of excavation and construction, she does an all-day elaborate photo shoot inside and out of the house before the landscaping had been completed and the rose guard was installed and the pine trees hadn't been brought in and the gate hadn't been set up and she spends all day doing photo shoots of her dream love home which the media called the love house she never moves in and they even took a picture of her fiance that she didn't have when she bought the property i mean how many 21 year old girls do you know get into a real estate construction project, which they can't afford, where they're going to build a Doppler Ganger twin house identical to the home that they want to live in and have a husband. And then they build a duplication right below and then take four years to build it and then never move in. And I'm going to tell you that there are zero women, there are zero men who would do that because this is a commercial uh, endeavor. This is a clandestine service. Homes, and it's two homes on the Cielo Drive address, and it's two homes on the 1048 Cielo Drive address, so that's four. And then a few years after that was finished, which would be in 1954, you know, so let's say 10 years later, then they go and build, uh, in 1952 and 1954 and 1955, they built four additional homes on Sunbrook Drive, which are neighbors, immediate neighbors of both the Cielo Drive terraced properties on both elevations, okay? And that takes me to today because today, Michael H. Scott, who is a partner in Court & Scott Financial Group, which is a real shadowy financial company that owns 9,500 modular homes or mobile homes or mobile parks, mobile home parks, it's kind of unclear what they do. It's a private company. There's no disclosures. Well, he's building uh, what's called a mega, no, he's building a giga mansion directly above where Sharon Tate was killed at the 1010 Angela Drive. And just let me explain to you, I thought that the Walt Disney home at 355 North Carrollwood was the biggest monstrosity in that neighborhood. And it was built down on the flats before the Benedict Canyon kicks up. He's just a block from Sunset Boulevard, close to Rodeo Drive, right? That's flat down there. And that's where Walt Disney built a 35,000 square foot home in the, in the 1950s. And, um, and he sold his 6,200 square foot home in Griffith Park, which eventually ended up being occupied by Lino LaBianca and his second wife, Rosemary. They lived in that Walt Disney mansion in, in um, 4053 Woking Way. That's what I said, Woking Way in Griffith Park. They lived... Lena LaBianca lived in that home for seven years before he bought a horse ranch down in San Diego way. And then he had to move into his mother's home temporarily before they could make the permanent move two hours down south to Vista, which is a horse farm. 
which meant he was quitting the CIA because his job was to be a money launderer and manager of six grocery stores and launder the drug money of the straight Satans and the Satan's lives. All right, anyway, that would explain perhaps why he got bayoneted 10 times in his chest and Rosemary got 41 bayonet wounds in her back, in her abdomen, and in her chest. So that's 51 total for the grocery store money launderers. Kind of like an Abigail Folger private banker, but for drug deposits. Also, he provided uh, provisional housing. He had seven rental homes that he exclusively kept available for CIA operatives working in the Griffith Park area, in and around the Griffith Park Silver Lake District is what it's referred to. All right, so I thought that the Walt Disney property, which was 35,000 square feet, uh, a tennis court, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and a railroad. He built a railroad where he named the engine after his older brother, Roy, nine-year-old older brother, Roy, who built the Disney Studios. It was Roy, not Walt. Walt's not a businessman. He's creative. Roy is the businessman. And there's Robert, who's the uncle that nobody talks about, and he must have a lot of connections with CIA OSS because there never would have been a Disney Brothers studio if it wasn't for Robert, the older uncle. But anyway, we only talk about Walt. We don't talk about Roy. But Roy lived in Toluca Lake, right five minutes from the office. And Walt lives further away. And now he moved to Holmby Hills over there in Benedict Canyon, where he built a railroad track devoted to, dedicated to his older brother. And, uh, but, but Walt died in 1966, so he's gone. And I thought that was the biggest home in Benedict Canyon was the Walt Disney estate, the last estate Walt Disney owned from like 1955 until 1966 is when Walt passed away, located at 355 North Carrollwood Drive, which feeds into Angelo Drive. And if you want to get to the murder scene, I would recommend you take Angelo Drive. You can take Carrollwood Drive or Benedict Canyon, but as soon as you see Angelo Drive, turn left. Turn left and climb up. And when you see Sunbrook Drive, hit the brakes and turn right and park. Just park. Uh, there, no, there's nowhere to park, but just park. But there's no traffic. It's a cul-de-sac, so nobody's going to say anything. And then walk. It's still uphill, but there's only, I think, five houses, maybe six houses today. Back when Sharon Tate was murdered, there were um, four. I think there were four houses. So today, there, I think they built uh, one or two additional homes. There's still, I think, a vacant lot there that could be a house, but it's just a lot. And I believe all those homes, every single one of those homes is controlled by the CIA. And the reason I say that is because Timothy Leary lived in one of the homes in very close proximity to the pool house where Abigail Folger was bayoneted 28 times. Timothy Leary lived in one of the homes. It would take you, you know, less than 90 seconds to walk from the driveway of 10106 Sunbrook Drive, which is a cul-de-sac, and just walk up the ice plant. You're at the pool house, walk a little bit further, 100 feet, and you'll be where Abigail Folger was trying to flee, trying to flee the property and was met with a team of a minimum of three soldiers with the M7 bayonet and they stabbed her 28 times and she had superficial wounds, another dozen that I'm not going to count. You know, her cheek, you know, her wrists, you know, trying to put her hands out to protect herself. There's nothing you can do when you have a soldier who's trained with a rifle attachment putting his weight into you. I mean, you're dead. You're dead. But I was wrong because this guy, Michael uh, H. Scott, who's the founder of Court and Scott Financial Group, he's attempting to build... <laughs> he sent a letter to the uh, Planning Commission for the city of Los Angeles and also city of Beverly Hills and where he kind of sort of didn't tell the truth. He said he wanted to build a 62,907 square foot single family residence above the Sharon Tate murder site. He didn't use the word Sharon Tate. He just said at 10101 Angelo View Drive, I want to build a 62,907 square foot house. So that's almost double the size of the Walt Disney Mansion, which is not far. It's about a kilometer down the hill, 1,000 meters away. Okay, but then when you look at the plans, guess what he forgot to mention? He forgot to mention that he wants to excavate dirt and put in a three-level basement. 
In other words, an underground facility, kind of sort of like, you know, Lookout Mountain, Wonderland Avenue, underground. Is that for studios? Is that a torture chamber? Is that for sex parties? Is that for keeping prisoners? Is it for human trafficking? What's the point of having, it's very unusual to have a basement in Benedict Canyon. It's especially unusual to have three levels with no windows cut into the hillside, perhaps with a tunnel system. And that's what this guy was. And it's 38,700 square feet with no windows. So he wants to put in 38,700 square foot underground basement facility that he's calling a basement. I'm calling it an underground dungeon. And then he wants to build a 62,907 square foot three level home above the 38,700 square foot underground facility. Which means that when he writes a letter to the board planning commission that he wants to build a 62,000 square foot home, what he really means is I want to excavate dirt and build a 101,607 square foot complex with 19 bathrooms that can accommodate 550 people. And then I want to put in 130,000 square feet of swimming pool, tennis courts, ping pong pavilion, six liquor barns, six saloons. I mean, it sounds like a commercial facility, doesn't it? I mean, why don't you take that down to Sunset Boulevard? I mean, there's businesses down there that don't have 19 bathrooms, that don't have six saloons. This guy wants six bars, multiple tennis courts, multiple ping pong tables, a pavilion with a roof, and he's saying he wants to do that so that it obscures some of the, inv the excavation work. You won't be able to see it because of the decking. And then there'll be more room to do sun tanning at the pool. So you can pretty much double what I just told you because I told you it was really 101,000 square feet. And it's really closer to 250,000 square feet when you add in the pool, the tennis courts, the ping pong pavilion and the suntan areas. And all of this, of course, is built over three level dungeon basement with no windows. And you know they're gonna soundproof that basement. That basement, you won't be able to hear anything. Van Halen could go down there and turn the volume up and you wouldn't hear it. So, in other words, nothing's changed, people. The, the Jeffrey Franklin home that's built where the parking lot used to be, where Sharon Tate was murdered in the living room, which is now a swimming pool, I think he's got three to five swimming pools now that used to be a pool house and one swimming pool. And, um, and the main house is now a swimming pool. And then they moved the 8,000 square foot home is now on where the parking lot used to be. And then they have an underground garage facility. So what I'm saying is on the Sharon Tate death property, there's a big chunk that's underground there too. So they did more excavation that will, than what was done in 19... 41 and 42 there was a lot of excavation going on and they added to that so this michael h scott i don't know who he is he's about 60 years old court and scott financial group is uh, has an office headquarters in anaheim you know not too far from disneyland orange county and that michael scott presently lives in what's called beverly park up on off of mall and drive he lives in a 17,000 square foot home so he's no strangers to living in a large house. But I guess 17,000 square feet is not enough for Michael Scott. He needs 62,900, not counting his 39,000 square foot torture chamber. So what he wants to do is move from 17,000 square feet to 101,607 square feet. And of course, this is running into resistance from the 50 people that live in the neighborhood that are not part of the CIA, and they think that this is crazy. In, in 2015, Beverly Hills passed a, uh, an ordinance that was ratified by the Benedict Housing Association that if you ever have a party in Benedict Canyon that involves more than 20 guests, you must provide valet parking or shuttle services so that the people don't drive their cars up these roads on Benedict Canyon or Cielo Drive or Angelo Drive. Those are the primary roads in Benedict Canyon. Angelo Drive, okay, which if you go all the way up Angelo Drive to where it dead ends, okay, you'll be at the Paul Allen Land Trust, 
which uh, you will not be permitted to go in there. And he's trying to develop mega mansion development on 120 acres. That's also above the Sharon Tate murder scene, but it's a little further up the hill. It's more directly in line with the Link, Art Linkladder House, and it's in line with the Gene Harlow, J. Sebring home. That's on the same latitude, longitudinal line. You know, that all lines up. And I'm trying to tell you is that all these properties in Benedict Canyon that I've discussed are part of the clandestine services. And I'm willing to concede that perhaps 40 to 50 homes of the 107 maybe are not involved in the surveillance scandalous events. But I'm going to say a minimum of half the homes are. Okay, and that that's the point. That is why Benedict Canyon got developed. It didn't get developed so people could have a nice, quiet place to live. It got developed to be able to surveil all these social engineering actors and actresses so that they listen and obey and do what they're told. And Sharon Tate was murdered to send them a very clever message that if, uh, if you get pregnant and you refuse to get an abortion and you won't renew your seven-year contract with MGM through Filmways, we will bayonet you to death. Right? We will lure you to a property that you don't live, and then we will murder you. That's, that's the message. And I believe everyone got that message. I really do. It also sent a powerful message to the bankers, because that's who Abigail Folger represented. All the people that went to Harvard and Stanford and have MBAs, and all the people that work for the big banks or the hedge funds, guess what? We can come to your house, and we can bayonet you 28 times. You bleed out on the lawn. I think most of those people did get the message. Roberto Calfi didn't. He got hung by an orange rope from the Blackfire Bridge in London. So, uh, and he was the number one banker on the planet Earth in 1982. And he got whacked. And Michele Sedona, he was one of the top 10 bankers in the world in the 1980s. And they gave him a cappuccino laced with cyanide. So he got whacked. Those are two top 10 bankers murdered after, after Abigail Folger got whacked. And Abigail Folger's mother didn't get whacked. She lived to age 100. And she's an elite banker in San Francisco. Very high level. She bosses Timothy Leary, who lives where her daughter got killed. Yeah, at 10106 Sunbrook Drive. Timothy Leary, CIA soldier, career CIA, LSD maven, lives at the Cielo Drive property. He lives on Sunbrook Drive. It's down the ice plant, 90 seconds away or less. I'll bet I could do it in 30 seconds. I'll bet I could run from his driveway up the hill. And Oliver Stone's going over there to give him a Get Well Park card. So what I'm telling you is everybody in Hollywood who lives in Benedict Canyon is controlled. And everyone in Hollywood who doesn't live in Benedict Canyon is required to go over there and visit people and go to parties because they are have to be obedient like Oliver Stone has to or else his films will not be distributed. I don't care who pays for his films. It's all about distribution and channel marketing. And if he doesn't obey, then there's no Oliver Stone films, which also means that Oliver Stone does not have um, director cut authority. He can do whatever he does and then someone above him makes the final cut because Oliver Stone does not make final cut in his movies. That's completely ridiculous. Otherwise, he wouldn't be going over on St. Patrick's Day on March 17, 1996, to pay homage to an LSD criminal by the name of Timothy Leary, who lives at the Cielo Drive murder scene. All right, thanks for listening. And just now you've heard the new name that I'm introducing to the Sharon Tate murder scene, which is Michael H. Scott, who's building a giga mansion of 101,607 square feet above the murder site and 38,700 of it is a windowless basement that I'll bet you is soundproof and it could be a torture chamber and it's very bizarre and it's directly above Jeffrey Franklin's 10,000, 8,000 square foot television producer of Full House Mansion which is on the Cielo Drive, Cielo Drive crime scene. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.